welcome to today's Let's Play and today I'm doing Dig a Dino. It's a deep discovery game for two to four players where basically you dig soil and rock, you try and find dinosaurs, you gain some extra points through various things. Uh, it's pretty simple but a good fun game. Inside the box you get one wooden dino which is this so that you can see who the first player is and whose turn it is. Uh, you get 60 worker tokens, I'll show you those in a minute, five tool cards 15 soil cards, 15 rock cards, and one rule sheet. So I'll show you these in a minute. So here's some of the token pieces. Uh, they all have the faces of people who contributed on Kickstarter towards the game being made. Uh, the sum of each colour, so there's four colours. We've got yellow, blue, green, and red, or brown, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> now I'm going to try and explain the tool cards and what they mean. The first thing you need to know um, is that you place your workers in the numbers given. So if I wanted to use the bone sonar before anyone else, I would place three of my workers there. Someone else could maybe put a one there, and let's say a third player puts that there. This would mean that as we go along the tools at the in the next turn phase, this person would have three first, they would get to go and use look at two cards first, and then the second player would look at two cards, but they would come second after the first player had gone, and a third person who put the, the one on this end would have to go third. Um, you can sometimes use in a two-player game that to your advantage. So, for example, if you know there's only two of you and someone's not too bothered about using the spade, you can put your two there instead of having to use three, as you know that they're not bothered, they might just put one. So these cards, when you in the turn that when these are used, you go from left to right. And you go from number to number. So wherever who's placed first goes first, the second placement goes second, and they would go third in a two-player game. And let's say uh, someone wasn't too bothered again. So someone's put three there. Someone's no one. No one's going to go there. So one puts there. Uh, this person would go first. This person would go second. Next thing you want to do is take all of your soil cards, which look like this. Don't look at them. Place them face down, and you place them in a five by three row should look once you've placed the soil cards they should be in a five by three grid as i said and i'm afraid i got the order of the tool cards wrong at the beginning so i'm just going to go through them again first you want the publicity card which grants you extra points so this is what the points look like in this game so at the end of the game if you had one if you had your characters on here these sort of worker tokens you would gain five per character Next one is Bone Sonar, which is what lets you look at two cards. Uh, you can flip them over, but you do it privately, so only you see. The next one is a spade, which digs the soil. The next one is the Rock Hammer, which digs rock. I'll show you those in a minute. And the last one is the Recall and Rest card. I'd like to show you a quick example of some of the soil cards, so you can see what's on them. So this is a Meteor Chunk, and again, this is some points. So the N2 means that however many of these you have, so say three, uh, if you had three meteor chunk cards, you would then get it times by two. So you uh, you would get six, nice and simple. Um, let's have a look at another soil card. Oh, another meteor chunk, so that would be your second one. You would gain four. Let's have a look at another. A family pet. So these can give you minuses. So you want to try and get your workers off them before the end of the game when you total up the points. There's some that add points, as we've just seen. There's some that take them away. Crystals are a good one to find. These give you four extra points. Uh, a usual score I'd say for points is maybe in the 20s region, depending on the game. Um, it can vary. Now I'm going to go through and explain each tool card. So this is the publicity card, which means the team with the most workers on publicity at the end of the game gains plus five uh, points. Unlike the other tools, work on publicity cannot be removed once they are placed and remain in position until the end of the game. So on the other tool cards, each turn you take those off and you put them on again in a in a different order, a different way. With the publicity card, if you place them on there, you never move them, you never get them back. This is the bone sonar card. Uh, one bone sonar action allows the player to look at any two face down cards on one layer, uh, sorry, any layer, without showing the other players. They do not have to turn over these cards simultaneously, but you can look at them one at a time. As long as you do not show the other player, you replace the cards face down when looked at and do not place a worker on those cards. So now we're looking at the spade card. Uh, you can place three, then two, then one worker on this. And again, the order of that would be whoever placed three first would go first, or whoever's on the second would go second, and whoever's on the first. If no one placed one on the third, though, it would go from the second to the first. If no one placed it on the second, it would just be the first. 
by first I mean the number sorry there that was a bit confusing I apologize so with the spade you can turn over one soil card and you get to look at it but you have to put a work on it you cannot not do that um so if it's something bad you're stuck with it until you get to do a recall which I'll go into later using the spade you can only turn a card that is either adjacent to a tool card or that is already or next to one that has already been turned over and diagonals do not count so for example on my first turn I couldn't use a spade to do uh, turn over this one I could do this this or this say on my next go I turned uh, sorry on turn that go I turned that over my worker would go there and on my next turn I could either go one two three or four it has to be adjacent with a full line not a diagonal the rock hammer is exactly the same as the soil uh, the spade sorry but for rock so you can only dig rock using the rock hammer you cannot do soil as with soil you can only dig soil you cannot dig rock so we looked at the soil cards now let's take a look at the rock cards i've turned them over so that we can see what's on them so if you got this card at the end of your turn or if you had a worker placed on here uh, you would gain the Triceratops, which gives you a straight away a seven points, but it's not completed, it still needs a tail. So, for example, if you were to then get this card, that grants you the tail, and you get an extra three points for that card alone, but also another five points for completing the Triceratops. So, they would go together like that, and you would gain also the extra plus five. So, you get 15 points for two cards, which is very good. An example of a dinosaur card that would need more than two cards is the Diplodocus. So this has the body, but no head and no tail. So for example, if we gained the top, we had the head card, you would then still need the tail card. You're going to get 12 points for those. Uh, let's just put those there. Uh, and then if you grab the tail bone, you would have a full dinosaur and you would also again gain the bonus on this card for having a completed dinosaur get all the parts of a dinosaur you only say get the head or the body you would still get the points for that body but you would not get the bonus points that is listed on these tailbone cards that give you the points kind of run down um so for example that one you would need the head still so you would get the six and the three points but you wouldn't get the additional five for completing it so this is the recall and rest card. The recall allows the player, if they wish, to return a worker from soil to a rock card to their pile. So if you had a card, if you had a worker on a card that wasn't particularly beneficial, or was one of those that gave you a minus that we saw earlier, you can take one worker from any card and you can replace it. You can put it anywhere you want. So it returns back to your pile in your hand, and then on your next turn you can put it somewhere else. The rest action allows a player to reassign their single resting worker to any tool space costing one worker. So it's a way of kind of pre-booking a space on the tools before you do it. Uh, so you can kind of book a, a one a one worker spot and you can kind of you can beat your ally uh, your enemy by doing that because you get that turn slightly before them. So for example, if you had one on a rest card, um and then your next turn, you could then place one on the bone sonar, uh, one of the one worker spaces on the bone sonar, or uh, let's see, for example, a spade. So it just gives you a spot on the tools before your opponent. You take it in turns to add your workers to the cards. So for example, you could place one on the soil, the next opponent, your opponent would then place one somewhere else. And you take it in turns until all your workers are done or you don't want to place any more. Um, the next round begins the cycle again with worker assignments. So after you've used the workers uh, and you have placed them, you then go to the, the tool part or uh, the action part, we'll say, where you would then dig rock, you would then dig soil, you could then rest a worker or recall a worker. Um, I'll show you all the different cards, but there is some extra ones here from the, the rock cards. So there's radon, which would give you minus eight points. It's magma, which would be minus nine. An ammonite, which would give you plus two. So to set up for a game, two players would take 15 workers each, which is all of one colour, uh, blue, red, yellow or green. If there are three players, you must take 10 each, and if for a four player game, you take eight workers each. So to set up, as we've done, you lay out the tool cards, which are these at the top. You then place the, the order in publicity, bone sonar, spade, rock hammer and recall and rest. 
We've shuffled the soul cards and laid them below the tool cards in the rows of Thrive. We've done that. Shuffle the rock cards and lay them below the soil cards face down. We've done that. So this now should be a 5 by 7 grid. Uh, and after that, you place the workers that you own in a pile near you. After placing the rock cards, and again, 3 by 5 or 5 by 3 sorry, you should have a table that looks like this. You've got your tools on the top, you've got your soil, and you've got your rock. The first phase is called worker assignment. Um, your aim is to assign your workers to the tools that you want to use in this round. So let's say that I'm yellow um, and I want to have a look at some cards earlier in the beginning because I want to know which ones I should be avoiding. So I would place, let's say I wanted uh, Bone Sona, that's the one. That Once all the cards have been turned over or all players have run out of workers or players are agreed they do not wish to turn any more cards over, i.e. that the only face down cards are negatively scoring, players collect all the cards with their colour worker on and count up what's called the Palio points. So that little star that we saw earlier that has the points in. It's called Palio points, I'm guessing, because it's a dinosaur game. It's a nice little twist. So for example, that one would be four. Um, let's see. Worms would give you none because there's no star. And again, we have Meteor Trunks, which depends on how many of those that you have in your hand at the end of the game. 